Welcome to 10 Sisters TV. I'm Carmen Geddes. Today I'm going to show you a wonderful way to piece some traditional quilts in a non-traditional way. So come and join me. Okay, let's get started. When I said we're piecing a quilt in a non-traditional way, what I mean is that we are going to piece these quilts on this lightweight iron-on foundation. This is my easy piecing grid, and we sell our grid by the panel. So this is one panel. The grid that I am showing you today is a one and a half inch finished. We print the grid ourselves, and we print in one, one and a half, and two inch finished. We go by the finished size. And in another video, I'm going to show you our half inch finished. But because we're piecing on a foundation, we are going to look at putting these quilts together in a little bit different way. Typically, when you're sewing a quilt, we're going to do strip piecing techniques, or we're going to do patchwork, where you build that quilt block and then sew them together. But instead of doing that, we are going to piece on this foundation. Now, because we're piecing on a foundation, we put these quilt patterns together in a little bit different way. I'm going to show you, this is our first book that we self-published. It's called 10 Quilts for 10 Sisters. There actually are 10 sisters. This is us on the back. And when we put a quilt together, I'm going to show you the one that I'm demoing on. When we put a quilt together or make a pattern, it's what I call a quilt layout. And what that means is we take that quilt and we are dividing it into sections. And each of these sections is the size of the panel. And so right underneath the quilt, it says how big this quilt is going to be if you're piecing with one one and a half or two inch finished grid. So what happens is the size of the panel is going to be a little bit different. The one inch finished is the smallest and then the one and a half and then I'm going to show you the two inch finished here in just a minute. So when you're ready to start a quilt you are going to have that fusible side up. If you don't remember anything else that I say remember the bumpy or the fusible side is up. One thing, just a little note, when the fusible side is up on the panel, the logo, the printed logo is backwards, but the numbers down the side are legible. So that's just a little um, visual that you can have when you start to piece. So you're going to cut out your squares. We are going to find the section of the quilt that you're working on, and you're going to just start laying out your squares. So here's our panel. That fusible side is up. We are going to just start laying out our squares. Now, a couple things I really like about piecing one square at a time is that you can fussy cut fabrics. You can do some really great designing with directional fabrics. But I think everybody's favorite part of this whole technique is that you get to see it. You get to see what it looks like before you ever start to sew. Now, when all these, when we're laying out our squares, let me back up first of all. Um, if we look at this panel right here, do you notice how there is a little bit of wiggle room between these squares? Well, that's for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that my cutting is probably not perfect, but when we print our foundation, we purposely print these squares just slightly bigger than your cut size. And basically what we're doing is we're giving you room to fold. So. We're going to talk about folding in just a second, but let's talk about ironing these squares down. When I am piecing my squares on top of a pressing surface like I've got here, then I, typically I will lay out a section of the squares and then I will bring in a little travel size iron and I'm not going to iron all the squares around like this. I'm just going to hold that just to kind of tack these down in place. Um, this is a nice little travel size iron. You can use a little mini clover size iron. You just want to remember that the foundation is fusible, so we don't want to get the iron on that fusible part. Now, I am putting my iron over these squares right now, but I feel like my fabric is here and the foundation is here. So when I'm just laying it on top, as long as I'm putting it over just squares, then it doesn't get on my iron. You can lay an applique pressing sheet over the top of it. That's kind of nice because you can glide the iron around at that point. 
But when all the squares are ironed on to a panel, do you see how I've got that trimmed right next to the fabric? I trim off the excess. Then I like to bring in a big iron with some steam and I give it some good steam because what you want is these to be really nice and secure. So when all the squares are where you want them, you're going to give that a good pressing so they're nice and secure. Let's see, let's go from this side. Then you are going to just fold that on the fold line and sew your quarter inch seam. And fold it on the fold line and sew your quarter inch seam. So remember when I said that because we print those squares just slightly bigger, we are giving you room to fold. And what that means is you are not going to have that bulk in your seam allowance. That makes a huge difference in your finished quilt top. So um, after you fold and sew your seam going in one direction throughout the whole panel. Now it doesn't matter if you're doing the short seams first or the long seams, but when I'm doing a quilt that has lots of panels, I always just do that in the same direction. So always sew the short side first or always sew the long side first. And that will make sense um, as we progress. So you're gonna sew through that panel in one direction. And then your next step is here is get this so you can see. So here is that seam that you just sewed and you're going to clip or snip between each of those squares. Let me get my little handy dandy scissors. I'm going to turn it this way. And so right between each of these squares, you're just going to snip, snip, snip right up to the stitching line. Now don't worry if you happen to snip through the stitching line because everything is held together by this foundation. So nothing's going to move or shift. So you're going to clip between each of the squares. Now the reason that you are doing that is so that we can press these seam allowances going in opposite directions. And the easiest way that I have found to do this pressing is I press one row going in one direction. My cord, there we go. I press one row going in one direction. And then I like to fold that under. Now I'm right-handed, so I like to press from right to left. So I'm going to just flip this around, and then I'm gonna come in and press the next row, going the other direction, and fold it under. So it's easier, so I'm not going back and forth this way. I always just flip it around so that I'm always just pressing from right to left. So that, to me, that's just a lot easier than trying to maneuver the iron up through here. Now, after you have pressed those seam allowances going opposite directions on the back, then I like to turn it over. Now at this point, it's, you remember how I really like steam. Sometimes I'll give this a little spritz with a water bottle and I like to press on the front side. And what that does is it eliminates any little folds that might come in when you, we've sewn those seams in one direction. So I like to press this all nice and flat. Now this is the best part. It's time to fold right sides together so, to sew the other direction. And I wanna make sure that you can see this. All those seams are nested perfectly. So there's no pinning, there's no adjusting. You're going to just sew your seams going that opposite direction. And then this is how it turns out. And so those corners are perfect every single time. Um, I love that we got to see what this looked like before we even started to sew. This particular pattern is kind of the pattern that started this whole thing for me because this is one of those wonderful quilts that we have because those sewers were piecing those squares together with needle and thread. And so now this and many other amazing old traditional patterns are easy for every beginner. So after we have sewn that second seam, you see how this second seam is all pressed in one direction. And again, this is where I bring in the steam. I'm gonna let the steam do some of the work on this. Now another quick thing that I want to mention, now this is actually two panels of the one and a half inch finished that have been um, sewn together. And basically, however big a section you feel like you can manage, there's no pinning. Um, we're gonna do a, another video talking about fusing panels together.
And we, that's after you would iron the squares on. We would fuse these panels together. And you're going to eliminate the pinning between these sections. But let's just say I'm going to piece two sections at a time. And so this one is all sewn together and I've pressed it. Now have you heard of the term blocking the quilt? Sometimes after a quilt is even quilted, you get that all wet and then you lay it out and you pin it to your floor to the exact size you want it to be and you let it dry that size. That's a, after uh, quilts are quilted and they get a little manipulated. Well, I kind of like to do the same thing for sections. And what I mean by that is not after it's all quilted, but just after it is sewn and pressed, I like to take a section and I will take the bottom edge and I will compare it to the top edge to see if those are the same length. And maybe I will do it again in the middle to see if it's the same length. And then I'll turn it this way. Because if it's off at all, I can adjust that with the pressing. Because with a quilt with this many squares, there's a lot of seams in there. So there's always a little bit of give. Rather than finishing the whole quilt top and then trying to get it all nice and square and pressed, I like to press these section by section and that pan that section might be just a panel at a time or if you are sewing several panels at the same time this is going to make having your whole quilt top nice and square so much easier so now we're going to move on to half square triangles okay when you are going to piece a quilt with half square triangles, boy, that just going to open up your possibilities to endless, endless possibilities. Um, and I, we are going to do the same concept. Now this panel is our two inch finish and I just, I'm gonna show you in the book, the layout. So this is our Seven Brothers Block Party book. This book is all about traditional quilt blocks. And when you are piecing with traditional quilt blocks, the sky is the limit. And I love sampler quilts. This is the small sample in the book. Now, one thing I wanted to point out about all of our quilt layouts is we are, remember how I said we're dividing them up into sections that are the size of the panel. So under every pattern, whether it's in a book or one of the patterns you download on the website, we always tell you how many panels are in this project and then you decide what size finished square you want and that will determine how big your whole quilt's going to be. So this sampler is a six panel project. There happens to be 25 different blocks in the quilt and when, what was I going to say? Oh, and we do the same thing where we are taking that quilt and dividing it into sections and each of these sections is the size of a panel. So when we are laying this quilt out on our panel this is a section of the quilt and notice how we've got these traditional blocks I've actually included the sashing in my piecing and I have brought in these nice little corner posts what we do with these traditional quilt blocks is we are breaking them down to squares and half square triangles now not every single patchwork quilt block will break down into a grid but there's almost an endless supply of quilt blocks that do break down to a grid. So when you look at these blocks that we have laid down, instead of cutting out a bigger square or instead of making a flying geese unit, everything is broken down into squares and half square triangles. So you're going to cut out your squares just like we did before. You're going to pre-sew your half square triangles. Um, we're, we are going to have a couple demos on different ways to sew half square triangles. So whatever method you like, this panel is the two inch finished. So our squares and our half square triangles are cut two and a half inches. You are going to lay these out just like you do the regular squares. But the trick to getting really nice points with the half square triangle is lining up the seam of the half square triangle from corner to corner. So remember when I showed you the easy piecing grid, each of those corners is defined by a little tick mark. So when I say line that up from corner to corner, your seam of the half square triangle is just gonna line up to that little tick mark that's in each corner. 
So you're the kind of the concept of piecing on this foundation is that your cutting doesn't have to be perfect because that foundation is. As long as these fit inside these squares and as long as that fits safely in your quarter inch seam allowance when you go to sew. We're going to sew that exactly the same way. We're going to just fold it on that fold line, sew your quarter inch seam, fold it and sew your seam. And then let me show you how that's going to turn out. Now what I think is so exciting is that typically or traditionally patchwork piecing the sewing is the most tedious part. You know, we're usually sewing these little short seams and we're building this block. So this is the opposite. We are laying these out. I love this because you can get very creative with this. Fussy cutting fabrics, doing some great designing with the directional fabrics. But the sewing is the easiest part of the whole thing. So we're going to do another a video specifically talking about half square triangles again, showing you a few different ways to make them and a few other tips for piecing them on the grid. But I hope this helps. I hope this inspires you to think about patchwork piecing in a whole different way. So if you liked the video, we welcome you to subscribe to us. Give us a like. Um, there is going to be a link to 10sisters.com in the in the in the description. And thanks so much for watching us on 10 Sisters TV.